Hello everybody and welcome to Unmanned Videos. Uh, today we are going to be doing a tour of my Minecraft Titanic. Uh, you can see the Nomadic alongside. I will be doing a tour on that ship as soon as I complete it. Um, but we're just going to do Titanic today. Uh, this video might take a little while. Uh, probably about 20 minutes is my guess. Because um, I've done quite a bit with this ship. And before we start I just want to give a quick thanks to Ryland's... Uh, He's a YouTube, uh, YouTuber, and he does, uh, ocean liner videos, ship videos, and I got a lot of this, or most of this build material from him on his Titanic videos, so be sure to go check him out. And yeah, we're gonna start the tour. So this is the bridge. And these, uh, sent signals down to the engine rooms telling how fast they wanted the ship to go. And then this was a wheel. They didn't use this wheel a lot. They basically used it in port and, like, docking and stuff. And then here's the wheelhouse. Uh, this was the main wheel they used, simply because it was, you know, indoor, warmer when they were out at ocean. I'm going to have a quick look at boat deck. So this is, like, officer's promenade deck area in here. And then past this fence, this is uh, first class promenade deck area now. Uh, notice that the lifeboats didn't really take up that much space of boat deck because some white star line people and some designers of the ship didn't want first class boat deck to be too cluttered and stuff like that, which, you know, it's 1912. Safety wasn't really that big of a concern back then, especially when you have a quote unquote unsinkable ship like Titanic. Um, and here you have the grand staircase. I think this room turned out pretty well. And then in here, this would be the first class gymnasium. Gymnasium. And we'll have a quick look at boat deck. Or, not boat deck, a deck, my bad. In here. And we're gonna go back to the reading and writing room and lounge. So this is the reading and writing room. You could basically just write letters to your family and relatives, uh, postcards, stuff like that. And then this is technically on two decks. You have A deck, which is what we're on right now, and then boat deck is where we just were. Pretty sure it was meant to give like a more luxurious, spacious feel. Then in here we have the lounge. Uh, same concept on two decks, A deck and boat deck technically. And then this is basically just a room where, you know, hang out. Uh, uh, pretty sure you could eat in here. There's a pantry, and there was a bar, actually, on the other side, which I have not completed yet. Going down this corridor, we have the aft grand staircase. Uh, this was basically identical to the grand staircase, but this one ran from A deck to um, C deck, and the main one went from boat deck all the way down to F deck. Then moving further aft, we get to the first class smoking room. This was also on two decks. And then this is the Palm Court Cafe for first class. Uh, I don't know, it was basically like a mini restaurant, and it had two sides. One was on this side, and the other half was on right there through those double doors. They looked identical. And then the promenade deck for uh, a deck spanned all the way around the ship. And that pretty much does it for a deck. We're going to have a look at second class sections on B deck now. So in there, that's the entrance for the aft second-class staircase. This is the second-class smoking room in here. Then this is the main second-class staircase that went all the way up to boat deck. Okay, we're going to have a look at the Parisian Cafe on for first class, which is in here. Uh, it's meant to resemble kind of like a Paris roadside cafe in here. And it connected to the Alicot restaurant in here. 
and then we're back out to the aft grand staircase right here. And then this was basically just the reception room for the Alicot restaurant. And um, we'll have a, f a look at some of the accommodations. But first, we're going to look at the boarding entrance real quick. So this is the grand staircase, still on B deck. And then this was the first class uh, boarding entrance in here. There's two of them. One was on B deck, which is here, and the other was on D deck, which we'll have a look at later in the video. Then this connected to the most expensive rooms on the ship. They had their own private promenade deck and boarding area. I don't really know if these were ever used, um, but they had the option of being used. I don't know if you had to pay extra or something, but they, I just know they were there. And it consisted of a sitting room, a bedroom, a bathroom, and another bedroom. Oops. I'll fix that later. Oh, this is a wardrobe. And there should be a door here. I'm not really sure why there's not. Uh, yeah. And that pretty much does it for B deck. We'll have a look at C deck now. Uh, C deck didn't really have a lot for first class. It was mostly accommodations. But what it did have, it had a uh, purse's office, which was basically uh, where first class passengers could store their valuables. And stuff. I know second class had one as well. I don't know if third class had one or not. They might have, but I don't think they did. And they also had a barber shop, which was by the aft grand staircase. And this is the lowest level that the aft grand staircase goes. And then the barber shop is in here. I don't really go into too much detail in here. I just kind of did it and left it. And now we're going to go down to D-Deck and look at some first class sections. So this is the reception room in here. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, the other boarding space, the set with the Nomadic. So if you were, this was the other option you had boarding in Southampton, this in B-Deck was. But if you were boarding in sheer bore, uh, you would have vessels like the Nomadic, which is right there, and the Traffic that would pull along along uh, alongside it. And basically, there was bridges that connected the two of them, and that's how you boarded if you were in sheer bore. And this is some um, accommodations right here. Uh, bedroom and wardrobe. Uh, then this is a staircase down to the squash court for first class I actually didn't know up till recently that Titanic had a squash court um definitely definitely was interesting so yeah it it spanned two decks like G deck and I think F deck pretty much and then this is the like a storage room I'm guessing for that or not storage room like a equipment room and we'll go back up to D-Deck and look at the dining saloon. Uh, I'm on E-Deck. My sensitivity is really high. And we'll go back to... This is accommodations on the other side of the ship. They were pretty much the same thing. I'm pretty sure they had, like, different carpets and different walls. Like, but I haven't done that yet. I've just done the basic rooms. And then, this is, like I said, the reception room in here. Like a waiting room. And then, this is the saloon. First class dining saloon for first class. Um, one cool thing D-Deck had is they actually had like a double porthole thing. To allow more light to shine into the dining room. Because it was pretty deep in the ship. And I guess they wanted a lot of light in here. Um, this, this is where, uh, piano would go. They actually had, uh, masses. Uh, if you ever watch the movie, that's where they were. There's a piano and, like, an altar that would go, like, right in here. 
and then they would remove all the tables and chairs in the center. Um, if you ever watched Titanic, uh, this is where Rose, Jack, Cal, her mother, uh, who else? Uh, John Jacob Astor, I think, sat here, as well as Molly Brown, uh, Mr. Isme. Basically, all those characters sat in the first class dining. Um, back there would be the, um, galley, I guess you could say, or the, the, the galleys and pantries. And I think this is sort of like some sort of buffet table, I think. I think they had, like, cake and stuff that was stored, or not stored, but, like, put on there for passengers to come get. And that's pretty much it. All I've done for first class on D-Deck. Is that open? No, not closed. Okay. And we'll go down to E-Deck now. Uh... This is the lowest level that the elevators go. I actually forgot to show these, but they were only on the grand staircase, and they went from A deck all the way, to, uh, excuse me, all the way down to E deck. Uh, accommodations in there haven't done them yet. Uh, there would be co accommodations all the way along that corridor as well, and we'll have a look at F deck, the Turkish baths and the pool. Okay, so this this is the Turkish bath in here. I'm pretty sure this is like a waiting room or like a cooling room. I I don't I forget what it's called, but it has something to do with that. And here this was an electric bath. A uh, shampoo room. Another shampoo room. Temperate room. Uh this was a sauna. Hot air room. and hot water tanks. Not really sure how these rooms were used, but they, I just know that they, they were there. And this is the first class swimming pool. Actually, the water shouldn't be this high. It should be a few feet lower. The reason that Titanic did that is because during rough seas, they didn't want the pool water spilling out and getting all over the place. A little fun fact, Titanic was actually the second sh uh, ship ever to have a swimming pool. Uh, her sister ship, Britannic, was the first. A little fun fact. Uh, these were changing rooms, basically. And then this corridor led back out to the staircase. This was actually separated by a watertight bulkhead. These should be, like, watertight doors. Because uh, we're on F deck now. And we'll have a look at Scotland Road and some third class sections now. Pretty sure this was, like, considered to be, like, an emergency exit. Like, first-class passengers and, like, crew, they, this was just, like, there for either emergencies or just, like, easy access to sections of the ship. I'll have a look at third class now. Uh, this is Scotland Road. Um, I haven't really gone into detail with this yet. Um, this is the third-class dining room in here. Uh, there's, like, four main sections, I guess. There was that one, that one. They were all identical, and... Nope, oh, I guess I haven't furnished these two halves yet. No. Uh, but these... This was also separated by a watertight bulkhead in here. So, we'll go a little bit more forward in the ship. I guess some more, uh, third-class areas. Uh... I guess I haven't completed this yet, but this is, like, a mix of third class and crew area in here. And this ladder went up to the, or not ladder, staircase went up to the third class opening space, which was kind of like a lounge. Not really, but sort of. And then this staircase actually went back up to the forward wall deck in here. I'll have a look at some crew areas now. Uh... This is a hospital in there. This is a crew galley, which is basically like a kitchen. A uh, galley store in here. Uh, this is the entrance to the crow's nest. So yeah, I actually have a pretty big shipyard in here. I will most likely be doing videos on these ships um, soon. 
to the bell. <laughs> sure that there's a hole there. Oh, uh, that's a staircase down to D-Deck. I'll have a look at that in a bit. Carpenter's store in there. Uh, this is a mess hall in here for the crew. Uh, another carpenter's store in here. Uh, this is a cargo th uh, thing that went all the way down to the cargo holds. This is where all the anchor gear would be kept. Like, there's a little steam engine that powered the most forward anchor. And then this should be a mess hall. That's another staircase. Another mess hall, and that's another entrance to the hospital thing. And we'll have a look at D-Deck. Uh, this is where the firemen slept. Same cargo thing. Other side of the firemen, and then there was bathrooms on either side. And then this is a spiral staircase that goes all the way to the tank top deck, which is where all the boiler rooms and engines would be, if I can get down there. Okay, so this is the fireman's passage. Um, it provided easy access to the firemen in case of a fire in the engine rooms or boiler rooms. Huh, I guess there's a merchant down here. Anyways, um, these... Titanic had six boiler rooms with 29 boilers. Uh, this is the entrance, what most entrances to the boiler rooms look like. They were just a series of ladders and platforms. And they all led up to Scotland Road. And I've only done the entrances to boiler rooms five and six. This is boiler room five in here. Same thing, just a series of ladders and platforms. And we'll have a look at the engine rooms. Here are the reciprocating engine room. Uh, I did a little redstone trick with pistons that kind of made like an engine noise. That's kind of cool. And then this is where the signal was received. And then this is, I think this is like a pressure gauge. And then basically how this worked is pressurized steam from the boilers was pushed into these cylinders, which moved the pistons, which moved the propeller rods, which spun the propellers. And then leftover steam from the engines was uh, going to the turbine room, which I have not completed yet, which drove the center propeller. Little fun fact there. And we'll go to the staircase... Not really sure why that's there. Um, we'll go to the staircase that goes up to the reciprocating engine room roof, or the RER roof for short. I'm just going to fly up through here. And that leads back up to boat deck between the third and fourth funnel. And then this is the lifted roof for the second glass smoking room right there. And that's the second class staircase entrance. Okay, we're going to have a look at second and third class sections on C deck now. This is B deck. And now we're on C deck. So this is the second class library, which is basically like a lounge. I have not furnished it yet. It's the aft second class staircase. Out here was the second class en enclosed promenade deck, which looped around all those rooms I just showed you. And then this is the aft well deck in here. This bit. And then this is the poop deck. It's basically like a third class promenade deck section. That's where these benches were there. And then this is the docking bridge. Uh, one thing, or... I think it was called a telegraph or a telemotive or something like that. One received engine speed and one received, like, how far they wanted the steering wheel over, which was received by the bridge and engine room. And then these are the cargo cranes for the cargo hatches. Have a look at third-class sections now. This is basically the third-class main staircase. 
in there. Uh, this was the third class general room, which is basically like a sitting room. Kind of like, you know, a lounge for third class, another one. And this was third class smoking room. Uh, the, now we're on D deck, uh, men and women's lavatory on the other side, um, baths, uh, then this was an emergency exit, this is a lot of the, went all the way down to the shaft room, and we'll have a quick fly around on boat deck, and then that'll be it for this video. So, quick little sum up. This is for boat deck. This is the second class main entrance. This is the raised roof for the first class smoking room. Then all of this is second class promenade deck. This is the dome for the aft grand staircase. You can kind of see it through the glass there. Uh, this is the engineer's promenade deck now. And then this was the roof for the reciprocating engine room. Uh, there was like... Uh, uh, what was I saying? Uh, deck chairs and mm, officers' mess hall in that deck housing. Lifted room for the lounge and reading and writing room for first class. And then this is, again, like I said earlier, first class promenade deck. And then this is the dome for the grand staircase right there. And I believe that pretty much does it for this video. So, uh, if you made it to the end, thank you for watching. Um... Again, this video probably was pretty long, um, but I hope you'd enjoyed it. Uh, expect videos on Nomadic and my other ships coming up soon. And yeah, bye.